In this video I document the installation of our new battery system. Next will be the Victron inverter charger and after that will be the new solar panels. Even before we picked up our outdoors RV, we knew we wanted a full off-road electrical upgrade like we had done in the Thor Axis. Since I had done it myself, I was up for the challenge again. We knew we would be somewhere where we could have big packages delivered, had full access to tools and skilled help at the end of October, so I started to order the parts I was sure I would need. The first and most expensive item was the lithium batteries. In our previous system, we had four Battleborn batteries. They work great and have great support behind them, but they're expensive. After a lot of thinking and watching reviews on YouTube, I decided that getting these Ampere Time batteries for half the price was my best option. They have good documentation and great customer service. As space was at a premium, I decided on 300 amp hour batteries that would fit my space and price. I ordered the solar panels on September 28th since it said they had a two to three week lead time. So I was pleasantly surprised when they were delivered 12 days later. These are the same brand I used before, just a little better. I have space issues, so I only ordered four panels. I sure wish that big round TV antenna was in the center of the roof. I ordered the Victron MultiPlus inverter charger, the solar charge controller, and the battery monitor from Battleborn. This is the same equipment I used last time and I was very happy with it and the Bluetooth app that you can use to control and monitor everything. I spent over $500 on wire and connectors for the project. It was more than I needed, but it is hard to judge before you get started. The 4 aught black wire I wanted was out of stock and the replacement I found was very expensive. I need to better inventory my wire stash so I know what I have for the next project. I also bought a soft start for the air conditioner. My brother-in-law Glenn installed it as he is a HVAC expert. This lowers the startup power needed for the air conditioner and hopefully allows better use with the batteries. Rhonda and I had decided that we wanted the system installed under the bed in place of the two drawers on the bed stand. The area you see would remain usable and everything would be installed below that. The drawers were easy to remove, but I forgot to document that. This shows the panel and drawers removed. It took a while to determine the best layout for the components. Now the actual work begins. I had to take out the existing lead acid batteries, reroute the wiring to where the new batteries would live. After documenting what wires went where, I removed the batteries, which are heavy and in an awkward location. There was even water in the battery boxes. The important wiring went from the batteries to the RV 12 volt breaker panel to start the generator, to the existing solar panel charge controller, and to power the trailer tongue jack. Now, knowing what wires are required, I needed to determine how to route them to where they needed to go and ensure they would reach. Much thinking went on. The wiring is the hardest part of this type project. The only way to do this is to start drilling holes in the floor. FYI, there's a floor joist at the center of this area. I drilled to the right side of that to avoid the wires running underneath the floor. I then used a fish tape to figure out where that was underneath the unit. It worked out and I expanded the hole and started running wires. Go very slow and be careful. Once you have the existing wires run, you need to install all the components and make your custom battery connection wires and connect it all together. I have a battery cutoff switch in an external compartment that still works and unplug the solar panel on the roof to isolate the system. During this time, the RV was able to get 12 volt power from the built-in converter. If you're not comfortable with this type stuff, you should hire an expert. These videos are just to document what I did and not to be seen as expert advice you can rely on for your project. Yes, it all worked and nothing shorted out when I turned it all back on. The existing converter has a lithium charger setting that I changed and the new batteries were fully charged the next day. A few days later we drove about 100 miles and all still seems good. I didn't track it closely, but I estimate that I spent about 30 hours doing the actual install work. I'm very happy that the backcountry outdoors RV is hot by off the ground. At our next stop, I will work on phase two, getting the inverter charger installed and disabling the current converter charger. This is another project that is mostly running the wiring. 
Thanks for watching and be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new to our channel. Feel free to leave us a comment and tell us what you think. We'll be happy to respond.